Welcome to this session on COVID and cybercrime. My name is Rebecca Lettingham. I'm the Vice President for Cybersecurity for MasterCard and our customers. I'm going to talk to you today about COVID and the implications of coronavirus on cybercrime. MasterCard is very aware of the unique circumstances our customers are finding themselves in at this time and how those uncertainties are being taken advantage of by criminals. Cyber criminals and fraudsters are agile and adaptive and will take advantage of business vulnerabilities to profit, considering the distractions and additional pressures businesses face from COVID-19 at the moment. There are no new crimes, there are only new criminals, I always say, and there has been an evident uptick in the volume of individuals participating in what is perceived as low risk online crime during this time. As victims are seen as being more vulnerable than usual due to things like furloughing staff, redundancies and remote working. Any crime that involves or relies on volume is bound to be successful. And one of the methodologies that cyber criminals are using at this time is that of phishing and spam, which has increased exponentially in the last six months. Due to the fact that phishing and spam rely on the weakest defense in an organization, which is people, there has been a notable increase in successful ransomware infections in particular, resulting from clicking on phishing emails. Businesses that traditionally relied upon and were successful in the bricks and mortar space have come to the realization that a move into the e-commerce space may be necessary to make or break their survival during this time, thereby creating an uptick in digital fodder for the cyber criminal. Conversely, COVID has pushed a number of e-commerce businesses to the wall as buyers change their shopping habits and there are less staff available to defend against attacks. Phishing is not a new cybercrime, but the content moves with media and topical issues. Here are some of the content types of phishing emails that are being circulated at present. There are a number of complicating factors at the moment that make it difficult at this time to fight back against the cybercriminals. Firstly, on average, it takes about 279 days to identify and contain a breach. And phishing campaigns began in earnest at the end of February 2020, and we're almost 100 days short of this 279 target at the moment. Therefore, it's expected that a number of breaches against merchants have not yet been discovered or contained. Secondly, Things like a lack of email authentication solutions in merchants compound the likelihood of a successful phishing email. If an organization does not use an automated weeding process prior to landing in an employee's inbox, they are more likely to click erroneously on a malicious email. And things like domain-based message authentication reporting and conformance or DMARC and domain keys identified mail or DKIM. These products allow the receiver to check that an email was indeed sent and authorized by the owner of that domain and should be used by companies to help support employees against phishing emails. And lastly, allowing workers to work from home can encourage complacency around security rules that would normally apply in the office. Remote working requires secure solutions and robust authentication mechanisms to ensure network security. This next session relates to how you keep yourself secure online. And I'm going to share some tips and tricks with you to navigate the digital world, both from a personal perspective which then impacts on how you deal in the professional environment with trends and threats around cybersecurity. It is vitally important to demonstrate good cyber hygiene when interacting online to reduce the likelihood of becoming a victim. What you learn and exercise in your personal environment serves you well for the professional environment. 
first tip I would provide is wherever or whenever you can use or accept Apple or Android Pay, do so. It is the most secure way to pay. Your phone does not hold or pass your credit card information in clear text. Instead, it relies upon a dedicated chip on your phone that tokenizes your card information and passes a token to a payment terminal. If a data breach occurs at that merchant which you've made a payment at, your data is safe and will not be exposed. Secondly, never use your corporate email for personal purposes or to shop online. Cyber criminals who compromise email addresses create suckers lists based on your email domain and sell them on the dark market. Corporate email addresses are aggregated and sold to criminals who wish to target your business. Keep your corporate and personal emails separate. Next, users of social media are 10 times more likely to be victims of cybercrime. By increasing your digital footprint online in a public way, you open yourself up to greater exploitation via phishing scams, malicious circulated images or fake links. It is important to keep your social media profile to a, to a minimum and to lock it down securely. For every thousand lines of code in a piece of software, there are around 68 errors. This means that all software applications require regular updates and patching so that those errors cannot be exploited. When your personal or corporate computer requests to update every month, update it. Whatever type of software application you use for your website, update it. Do not delay updates. They are vitally important to the security of yourself and your business. Cyber criminals are able to scan the internet and identify you from any unpatched systems that you may be operating with. Next tip, always use antivirus software. Do not assume because you have a Mac, etc. that you are protected. More and more malware is being written for all di different types of devices, including mobile phones. When visiting a website, always ensure that it begins with HTTPS and not HTTP. HTTP means that any information that you send is not being encrypted or hidden. All websites where you make a payment should use HTTPS. Never make a payment online without the padlock symbol being present. Also, look out for small transactions or $1 transactions on your credit card, particularly to charities or hosting providers. These are usually an indication that your card may have been compromised and sold on the dark web and is being used to test for validity. Next, never use the same password for your PayPal, Amazon or email account. Once one password is compromised, cyber criminals try your email password combination in other well-known retailer sites, and this is called the golden key. Finally, from a personal perspective, you should always have multiple email addresses for different purposes at least one email for retail online purposes only, one email for banking only, and an email for personal correspondence, and do not mix these purposes. Segregating emails helps you monitor what is genuine and what is malicious, and helps keep your private data private. And always use strong passwords on personal email accounts and iCloud accounts, particularly if you use them to share personal images.